Hello and welcome back to the podcast. In this episode, I actually am bringing in one of my Greensboro College students, and she's going to have her resume critiqued by a Thing data scientist. So those of you who aren't familiar with big tech, Thing is an acronym for Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, or Google. So Tina was recently hired as a data scientist with one of these huge companies. And what she's done is she's actually sat down with me and Christina and gone line for line through Christina's resume. So I'm extremely excited to get to share this with you guys. Without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into this podcast episode. So always the first thing that I check is, um, is it one page long? Because if it's more than one page long, I go and have an aneurysm. So it's very good that it is one page long. Um, and let's just see here. Okay, is it? Okay, did you actually send this to me? I think it would be a lot easier if I can see it myself. Okay. Um, did you send it in the chat? So Tina, what were you saying? The first thing you look for is that it's just one page. Yeah, like even uh, your background, you're an undergrad student. Like I don't think that you should have more than one page unless you are a very prominent publisher with your P like while you're doing your PhD uh, or you have at least 10 years of experience. Yeah, it was hard to like try to get it all on one page. Okay, so let's see. I like the format, very nice and clean. Um, education, analytics experience, work experience experience, leadership experience, skills. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. Let's just start off with, um, yeah, the, the header looks, looks completely great to me. Um, that looks fine. Education, Greensboro College, uh, Bachelor of Science, Math. Okay. That looks good to me as well. Uh, so, okay. The thing that first thing that pops up to me is I am a little confused by analytics experience. So that's a subset of education, right? Like that's like a subset of where it belongs. Right. Um, but to me, I, it looks like when I first see I'm like, is that like another section that's for some reason not capitalized? So I would actually just change the format of that. So it's a little less confusing um, for whoever is like reading it. So for the analytics experience. Yeah. So Tina, to give you context as to what that is, is we've actually added a student practicum to the case studies and business analytics course that I'm teaching. So the students are actually getting to study my YouTube data to build out ad campaigns, and then I'm putting a advertising budget behind it. So they're getting real work experience within the class, which I think is a pretty novel idea. I haven't heard of any other, um, well, I don't know any other YouTubers that are that are teaching and like bringing their students in on their channel. Yeah, yeah. So I think in that case, I would actually just put that under, um, maybe don't call work, call work to experience something else, like real, like uh, analytics experience, like work and analytics experience. Like, I don't know, I can't think of anything on top of my head, but I would actually put that under work experience or whatever you call that section because- put it all together. Yeah, because the analytics experience here, like John David, you told me what that is. But if I just look at this, um, I don't know what that means, right? I would see like student analytics practicum and I'll be like, okay, like you, for some reason, uh, you know, was doing somebody's YouTube channel. So in, in that case, I would put on a work experience and actually have a line explaining what it is. Um, John David, that what you just said, right? Like you, one of your professors worked with a professor a uh, professor's YouTube channel, how to get an analytics job, and then XYZ. So the way that I like to format everything, um, it's like whenever you have an item, first line is always going to be an overview of what it is that you're doing and why it's relevant. And mm -hmm. the second line would be any technical skill sets that you, you use, uh, be like coding or like whatever platforms that you're using. And the third one is about impact, like what impact did you actually drive? So for example, here, increased audience retention by 661%. That is amazing, right? So that would be the third line in which what kind of impact your analytics drove. Okay. Awesome, yeah, because I haven't yet looked at this resume. Um, so we're both looking at this the first time together. 
Um, I absolutely agree. I think that you should probably combine your analytics experience and your work experience. Personally, I think I would just say work experience because I would say a student practicum is technically work experience. Um, one of my, my former co-hosts, Elizabeth says, you know, a lot of jobs will ask for, what is it? One to three years of experience you can count internships and you can count, you know, these kind of applied student projects as work experience. Tina, would you agree with that? Is, is student work or projects with real companies, does that count? Even though that's kind of, you're having someone guide you through that? Yeah, so I would put that under uh, work experience, um, but I would also just for clarity, say something about, you know, um, for example, in your work, you see a personal tutor, check online tutoring company, right? It would be like whatever that role is and then put the university there. So whoever it is will know that this is at the university that you're currently at. Um, yeah, just, just for clarity, but I completely agree. It definitely is experience um, and you are driving impact in what you're doing. So I do have another question though, which I should probably have asked you beforehand because uh, usually the resumes I see are people who want to go into data science. But in your case, what kind of roles are you looking for? Um, well, currently, I will be sending this resume to um, Wake Forest to apply to their uh, business analytics master's program. And then after that, or like also, um, well, really, I'm not like 100% sure what kind of like role I want to be applying for yet. But um yeah, so probably just like something in like an analytics space, or I've also looked into like actuarial analytics roles. Um, so that as well. But like for now, currently, I'm like trying to focus it on um, like for grad school because I have to submit my resume to Wake Forest. Right, right. Okay, I'm really glad that I asked you this question now, because the rule of thumb is that you should always tailor your resume towards whatever it is that you're applying for. Right. right. So in this case, since you're applying for a master's degree, um, honestly, instead of work experience, I would almost like, what's the better way to say? I want to like put it under something more academic. So usually I would recommend like research experience. I don't know if this class uh, you're attending would consider this as like some sort of research um, because if you're going for a master's program or just like academics in general, they're just like, wow, research, research is amazing. You know, they love that kind of stuff. Right. Well, John, David, would you consider this research? So I think we could frame it up as research, but I'm not sure that they would buy in on that. So Tina, to my understanding, I'm not really in the academic I mean, I, I teach this analytics minor program, but I'm not kind of in that master's level. I think research in the academic sense is different than you could make the argument that you are researching my YouTube demographics to come up with an ad campaign. I think right. that's probably not the frame in which research kind of comes through in an academic sense. Yeah, actually, let me just take a look over um, what actually it is that you did. So developed a data informed buyer persona by studying YouTube audience demographics, Florida, how to get an Alex job, YouTube channel, increased audience retention, email marketing campaign, uh, historical social media, discovery industry trends, industry specific benchmarks, identifying track email campaign successes required, improved click through rate. Okay, I see. Okay, in that case, I, I tend to agree with you, John David. Um, in, in that case, put that under work experience. But like I was saying earlier, put the university there because this is academically driven, right? Like you're doing this as part of some sort of class. Um, uh -huh. so I think that would be better, especially since you are going to be applying for grad schools. Um, and in general, like the structure of it, uh, what I was saying before, you structure it in like a you know, what's, what it's about, technical stuff, what you accomplish, I think um, that would actually free up a lot of real estate on your resume as well. And, and it would also be easier to read. Okay, that sounds good. And as far as like the leadership experience, as I put it like that, would that be like a good, I guess, uh, like subheading or what 
I don't know what it's called, like the bolded part. <laughs> yeah, I would call that just extra leadership and extracurriculars. Um, so right. you can, I also like to think of a resume as, you know, it's, it's a story, right? You're trying to convey something to the person reading it. And, you know, with any story, there's always going to be like the thing that is like the star of your resume, the thing that you really want to highlight, and then all the supporting bits that give you the nuance of who you are as a person. So looking at your resume right now, I think, um, correct me if you don't think that's the case, though, I think the most relevant thing that you have is um, the student analytics practical, right? So that mm -hmm. should be like the star of your resume, and milk that as hard as you can. Um, so yeah, like write those down, write those accomplishments, feel free to like, you know, talk about that um, a lot and in terms of the other stuff like your other work experiences um you know they're, they're kind of like kind of like details and things that really like spice up your resume so definitely keep them there but I think it's it's helpful to frame it in that way like this is this is the star of my resume I should really highlight this part and with the other things just you know have them there but have them kind of fill out the other aspects of your personality and your career Okay. And then for the skills part, like, um, so I kind of just added those, uh, like this semester, most of them, because I didn't know Tableau or Power BI, or I was not too familiar with Java until this semester. So mm -hmm. I kind of just put them in like that, like, is that just an okay way to put them in there? Or should they have more of a description? Yeah, so again, um, I just want to like emphasize my expertise is not really on like business analytics side of things. Um, I feel like the resumes I tend to see are much more technical, um, mm -hmm. computer science, software engineering, data science kind of things. So at least like from that domain, um, what you have here is perfectly fine. Usually because it's like for more technical roles, they can have like more stuff that's being described over there. Um, actually, John, do you know, like, what do you think in terms of the way that it's laid out here? So for a business analyst, I think proficient in Excel and Microsoft is pretty much a given across the board. Um, although what you may want to do here, Christina, over the next four months, as we round out, you know, your, your senior year, you may want to look at getting an Excel certification. And there's also a Tableau certification, the desktop specialist designed for people who have three months worth of experience. So I think that if you could have those skills credentialed in some way, I think that adding a, you know, a Tableau certification is going to mean a whole lot more than just listing that out. Now, that being said, if you are going to be applying for some of these larger companies, they are going to have some type of artificial intelligence or some type of sorting mechanism that will sort out the resumes that don't have Tableau or you know, maybe JavaScript. So even if you, if you don't have a certification in one of those, but that is in the job description, for sure add that in because you're gonna get weeded out of even that, that first round. They're not even going to forward your resume to a hiring manager. Okay. ATS system, applicant tracking system. <laughs> right. And you may even want to start, and this is a, a, a Tactical Thursday episode we posted a few weeks back. Um, if you were looking to get a very specific type of job, which Christina, you're like right in that, time, that window where you may want to start looking around at what are some entry-level analyst jobs you might want to get, then you know, download all of those descriptions, go down to the skill section, and that's going to be the blueprint. So if you don't have some of the skills that are in that section, spend the next four months at least getting somewhat familiar with them. Because I mean, Tina, you taught yourself SQL very quickly. So, I mean, it was like what, 12 days? <laughs> How many? 11 days. Ele oh, even more 11. impressive. <laughs> so, wow. so yeah, you, right now, I feel like this resume is a little bit vague which is okay, but what I'm saying is, you know, we're about to start rounding out your senior year, so you may want to start, I, I would actually put two different resumes together, so one for a job, and then one for grad school. Okay, 
Yeah, I guess that makes sense since you mentioned like tailoring it towards what you're trying to achieve. Right, you don't wanna have a vague copy pasta email that you send out to every single opportunity that comes your way. Right. Awesome. Tina, do you have any closing thoughts? I feel like the resume, you know, I, it feels pretty filled out. Yeah, yeah. No, this is actually a really interesting experience I just wanted to mention because I haven't um, actually seen a business analytics um, resume before. Um, so this is actually like, my first time seeing it. So do take everything I say with a grain of salt because I'm not really used to like this specific type of resume. Um, but in general, if I'm just thinking more towards like, you know, uh, if I'm telling a story kind of thing, I would say that you can probably reduce some of your bullet points um, for the leadership experience as well as the, uh, what's the other one? For the work experience one. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, what I'm reading, like for example, work experience, personal tutor, chat, tutor individual students, pre-calculus, calculus one and two, statistics by reviewing the material they're struggling with and breaking down the cost of step by step until they reach a full understanding of the mechanisms behind the problem. I, I feel like that's a little bit too wordy um, for my taste because I would glance at your resume. Like the way that I look at your resume would be like, first I look at, uh, you know, all the things that are there, like all of the, the structure that's there. And then I would look at like each, specific item and when I see a line that's like you know very wordy my eyes kind of just like glaze over it um and I think that most people who read resumes are also like that so if you can try to simplify your wording it would yeah. be much easier to read and a general thing is you want to keep your tenses the same so for example in personal tutor you have tutor you have strengthen you have analyze actually I think they are the same they're all uh Okay, so yeah, this is the where I saw. So under public relations chair, it's like collaborated, provided, managed. So I would say stick with one tense form. It's a lot easier uh, for the person reading it. But yeah, except for that, I think like you have pretty much everything there. It's just a matter of kind of piecing things together. Um, and as John Day was saying, like, you know, adding maybe some certifications, adding some things that can round out your resume more. Awesome. Well, thank you.